older generations, who are the I don't use computers people of your time? My grandparents are very old fashioned even for their generation, if it counts. My grandfather worked as a grocery manager for years. He finally quit when his small mum and pup store buckled down on bar scans and electronic cash registers. He was convinced that barcodes were going to be the mark of the beast from Revelations, and that if people use computers to access adult content, then all computerized items must be banned. So there's that. When remote control TVs came out, I suggested that my father buy one, and he said, It will be a cold day in hell when I'm too lazy to tell one of you boys to get up and change the channel for me. It was such an amazing sentence that I committed it to memory, and I still remember it word for word 50 years later. From his point of view, he already had a remote control TV. Why should he pay extra to have it automated? Exactly. He would have had us act out Game of Thrones before getting a subscription to HBO. My mom was just telling me about when answering machines were new and how people were so fearful of them and refused to leave a message. She got promoted at a job because she didn't mind calling clients and leaving messages. I bought my grandmother an answering machine in 2005. She refused to get one before that, despite several of her children begging her to invest in one. I got her a $10 one from Walmart. I told her that I'd set it up for her and she asked me where it was. She was under the impression that answering machines were about the size of a toaster oven. After some questions, I also learned that she objected to getting one for so long because she was concerned about how much counter space she thought it would take up. But she also used the same bath water for a week at the time and kept her hearing aid batteries, all of them, not just the ones she wasn't currently using, in the freezer so they would last longer. So who knows? Some of the older alkaline batteries would slowly discharge over time, You could slow them down by storing the ones you weren't using in the freezer. It didn't make them last a lot longer, but it did give a slightly longer shelf life. However, my grandmother would keep all of her batteries in the freezer and not have any batteries in her hearing aids at all. As you can guess, that didn't improve her hearing, no matter how long the batteries were lasting in the freezer. I mean, I might be wrong. That sounds like it might stray from being technologically illiterate and just not caring that much about functioning in life in general. The battery freezer thing might be an incredible case of being a cheapskate. Some still had outdoor toilets and were laughing at those who'd installed them inside because they're crapping in their own houses? I lived on a homestead a little while. I had an outdoor pit privy toilet. I hand carved the toilet seat myself. Sometimes I miss watching the sunset while taking a dump. It was way better than being stuck in a small room reading Reddit on my phone. Unless it was raining, wiping while holding an umbrella is trickier than it looks. When I was a kid, late 50s and early 60s, seat belts in the cars were an option. Lots of people thought they were unnecessary and refused to pay extra for them. Heaters and windshield defoggers were likewise optional. My parents bought a new 1964 Plymouth Valiant and didn't get the option. I think all it takes is one snowfall in the winter when you're struggling with a windshield that constantly fogs up and frosts over. Absolute misery pulling over and scraping the inside of your windshield. My dad once told me a story about his grandmother refusing to fly in planes because she didn't want to get her hair all messed up from the wind. I'm picturing her flying with Red Baron Snoopy as the pilot. Honey, I promise your hair won't get messed up from the wind. Plops leather bomber hat on her head. My 89-year-old mum pays for cable but insists on watching only PBS and occasionally NBC, CBS or ABC. The other channels are too much technology to find on the remote. She also buys multiple boxes or cans of food, dates them in Sharpie marker, records the price, less coupon or sale special, and has a rack for all her finds. She will never eat all the oatmeal or beans in our collective lifetimes. But she was a Depression-era child, so I get why the urge to stock up on food is strong. My grandmother is 89. When she was a kid, she had an uncle who hated cars. He called them machines and refused to drive one. It could have been job security, though. Her whole family worked for the railroad. In all fairness, cars are machines. Then again, so are trains. Fun fact, the Russian word for car is makina. My dad is 65. He remembers old folks complaining about the Ford Pass in football. But it did completely change the game. My grandaunt still believes that 15 is the age of adulthood, that schooling isn't necessary beyond that point. She grew up in a time when literacy wasn't a given. With a bachelor's degree and a very mediocre Spanish, I would have killed it in 1920. For all of about eight years. Well, now I'm greatly depressed.
My grandmother drinks only hot decaf coffee. Breakfast, hot decaf coffee. Dinner, hot decaf coffee. Feeling parched after a day of hard work? Hot decaf coffee. 100 degree July day with lung clogging humidity? Hot decaf coffee. When I was growing up, we never had ice. That was a luxury. Cold drinks aren't good for your stomach. My parents are from former Soviet country and also refuse to drink anything cold, saying it'll make you sick. My dad doesn't even drink beer cold. Room temperature at most. Any beer drinking alcoholic will tell you you can drink a lot more beers if your beers are room temperature instead of cold. This is actually a very common thing in Asia. In China, they only drink hot water. According to Chinese medicine, cold water, and cold things in general, are very bad for your stomach. They won't eat refrigerated fruit. I lived in China for a few years, and my roommate thought I was insane for refrigerating my watermelon. I found that was the safest way to store it because none of them would touch it. In Germany, they don't put ice in their water. I've never liked ice in my water, so living in both Germany and China at different points in my life worked for me. The US is actually pretty unique in that everyone wants their beverages ice cold. I had a Chinese roommate in college who kept a gallon of Sunny D out at room temperature for weeks while drinking it. Weirded me out. My grandparents laughed at the idea of a mobile phone or sending messages through the phone line when fax machines were a thing. My grandparents didn't like computers and they still had a typewriter or wrote by hand. I was given a typewriter as a kid, but then I was using Windows 95. OG hipster right there. I'll be honest, as a 30-something-year-old, I have no idea what a fax actually is. The gosh darn answer would be one Google search away, but I'm going to live on in ignorance for a few more minutes, so you lot can judge whether this is normal or whether I'm exceptionally ignorant. Back in the 80s, I knew an old lady who used one of those really old toasters that could only toast one side of the bread at a time. As a present, we went out and bought her a modern pop-up toaster, but she wouldn't use it. She preferred to use her old one. I could see if she had one of those rad sunbeam radiant toasters, which in many ways are superior to any toaster on the market today, but this is just a fire waiting to happen. I see you've also watched that Technology Connections video. I'm the web designer for a local organization. Their treasure refuses to accept card payment via their website. People have to print out forms, fill them out, and post them with a check. I also get paid by check with a handwritten note. They would be a much more popular and successful business if they just modernized a little. My law firm still uses checks. We're also on QuickBooks Desktop 2008, and our timekeeping software is from 2011. We don't use Word, we use WordPerfect, and our forms are still set up to double space after periods. Nightmarish. My grandmother didn't like to use the remote control for her television because she was afraid it would break somehow and function as a laser dangerous enough to set things on fire. My grandmother complained about remote controls for TVs because it would promote people being lazy. Because apparently watching TV in the first place is a rigorous activity. Modern day. I've had people tell me using a voice-activated light system in my house is lazy because there's something to be said for getting up and turning on a light. Like what? It builds character to flip a switch? I'll take my space house, thanks. My Depression-era parents refused to ever have AC because it seemed frivolous and unnecessary, and my dad chose seatbelts as the symbol of government overreach and refused to ever wear one. In 1980, we took a family trip from Virginia to St. Louis and back with four kids in the bed of a pickup truck. I remember my grandma telling stories of when AC was a new feature in cars. People would keep their windows rolled up in summer so that people in other cars would think they had AC. My parents didn't have AC. I begged for it constantly, and every time my mum would send me outside for a few minutes instead. That way, it would seem cooler inside by comparison. If it didn't, she'd tell me that I could go up into the attic and come back down. They bought an AC unit the year after I graduated and moved out. They just didn't want me to be comfortable, I guess. Being miserable builds character. Or something. My senior year of high school, I had a series of newspaper articles in the local paper explaining how the web wasn't a fad and wasn't going away. Nobody but one guy at the paper believed it. It was 1995. My high school, I graduated in 2000, was like this. We didn't have computers in high school, and although there was pressure to buy them, the administration claimed computers were a dying fad and spent the money that was to go for a computer lab on new football equipment instead. This was rural Pennsylvania, and I assure you, I'm not making this up. Others did bring up a good point and stated this is a tactic for administration to spend how they want versus what the school needs. Also, according to people who still live there, whose kids now go to school there, the school did a 180 on technology in the early 2000s, and kids now have computer classes. 
you can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. I had a professor in college that taught building systems. He was like 80 years old, knew all of the new ways to build a structure, never used CAD. All of his details and plans were hand-drawn. I've taught a couple of classes on how to use more advanced functions in CAD. None of my students had ever even seen a French curve before. I was purposely taught how to hand draft in high school, 2007, before I learned CAD. My grandfather used to yell about, You lazy kids and your zippers! My father worked at a car dealership up until 2018, was a manager and had a computer on his desk. Someone filed a claim that he had harassed them, saying he sent lewd emails. IT came to his desk and logged onto his computer. Not only had he never sent an email, he had never read one either. He had more than 60k unread emails. His boss asked him how he knew about meetings if he never checked his email. It's not hard. You see everyone get up and walking to a location. You follow. Needless to say, he was cleared and the person making false claims was fired. Color TV. When they became common in the mid-60s, a lot of older people believed they emitted harmful rays. When mum finally got one in circa 1972, it was kept in her bedroom and we were ushered in to watch it only on special occasions, and we had to sit at least 10 feet away. Given how small and low resolution even a big TV was in 1972, I can't help but laugh at the crowded family squinting to work out what was happening from across the room. My grandmother is 97 and told me about people who would refuse to get air conditioning or drink sodas because they're the devil's work. She grew up on a farm in a two-room house with 11 family members living in that house. She always had sodas and the AC rocking and rolling all summer. My grandma is 79 and refuses to turn on her AC for religious and it's gonna make mold grow everywhere reasons. I swear she's gonna die of heat stroke one summer, but welp, she's into some kind of hardcore sub-Christian or Catholic cult. It's not Amish, Mormon, or the Jehovah's Witnesses. Too minor, so I forgot the name. Tech is not forbidden, per se, in their thing, but it's not liked at all by their thing. It's like everything bad that's happening to Canada comes from soulless new tech and immigrants. The whole thing is weird and doesn't make sense to atheist software engineering students like me, so I'd have trouble explaining more. My mother refuses to get a smartphone. She does, however, have a tablet with a data plan she takes with her everywhere, in addition to her dumb phone. When I point out that tablets are just big smartphones, she scoffs. What can you do? I don't read novels. My grandfather thought they were a plot by the elites to both ruin our eyesight and keep us locked away in a fantasy world. How old are you that the technological advancement your grandfather didn't trust was books? Socrates has joined the chat. Scrolls were good enough for my parents and their parents before them. Socrates didn't even really like scrolls either. Since your writings don't update as you learn more or change your mind, he thought that they would just spread misinformation and it was better to rely on talking. Love you, Socrates, but writing is the invention that allows for a large society to function. What Socrates needed was GitHub, to be honest. I said at one time I would never buy CDs. I liked albums and tapes too much. I never got rid of the albums and tapes, but now I have many CDs also. When they first became available, I honestly felt that both CDs and DVDs were just an industry conspiracy to stop people from recording their own music or movies with cassettes or VHS. DVDs were originally marketed as uncrackable or uncopyable, so you're not entirely wrong. I remember it being a huge deal when that guy found out how to do it and shared that info to the world. My grandpa used to tell me that he was basically set for life because he learned to read and write. Mass illiteracy wasn't as long ago as we like to think. Touch tone dialing. My mum refused to pay the one dollar and change a month to have it. She finally caved in around 2002. Since several have asked, touch tone was a keypad. Much like what almost every phone is now. Before that, it was a rotary dial phone. When my dad was in his 80s and losing some of his marbles, I started taking over some of his household chores and errands. Discovered that he was still using a rotary phone because he wasn't paying for touch tone. He was, however, still paying a rental fee for his telephone. He had been renting it for 50 years. We went to the phone store and got him a touch tone and they waived the fee, so that his bill pretty much remained the same with the new phone. I also got him a cordless, but he hated using it. He'd forget how to answer it. Press talk. Poke? 
It was sad to watch a formerly bright person, former high school teacher, totally unable to cope with simple household items. I still miss him. Digital clocks are lazy. My school has to hold an assembly for the fifth graders every year who can't read analog clocks because they can't afford to replace all the clocks in the middle and high school buildings. As silly as this is, I think that analog clocks will always be around. As a nearsighted person, I can often read an analog when my eyes can't see a digital one. Grandfather thought graduating high school was a big deal. He graduated in 1941 and was the first in his family. We had a great aunt who hated using the washing machine and claimed it never cleaned the sheets properly. At least in Costa Rica, where I live, at that time it was all you needed. Once you ended high school, you were pretty much set up for life. Some of my gruncles married shortly after finishing it and are still happily married. Boy, that's a different time. To think it was normal for people about my age to have been married and stable for half their lives, when a lot of my counterparts right now don't own houses, is just kind of wild. My grandparents were the first people to have a television in their neck of the woods, rural North Carolina in the 1950s. A big deal back then. Grandma told a story when riding on a bus back from work one day and a couple of her neighbors were on there too. They were talking about how the Blake Burners got one of them fancy TVs, saying how it was an evil thing and would simply be bad of one of them to buy one, and that they, the neighbors, were wise enough to never get one. Of course, they knew my grandmother was on the bus with them, as they said it really loud so she would hear them. Petty jealousy from them made my grandma run off the bus in tears. Story goes that Grandpa, a mechanic who was doing well enough that they could buy a TV, was so livid that he refused to work on those neighbors' vehicles for decades. He was the only mechanic around for almost 20 miles, which back then was an hour drive from anywhere else. An acquaintance of mine told me her grandmother doesn't own a refrigerator because refrigerators are harmful and for lazy people that don't want to cook fresh food. I remember people's parents not having microwaves, although by the time I was growing up, that was pretty rare. The convenience had won over almost everyone by then. I've had a co-worker about 52 years old, refused to use a computer because he caught his wife having an affair on a chat room on their computer, so he destroyed it. At that point, if she wants to cheat, she'll find another way. Yeah, she was cheating. The computer is how he found out, right? I still have a wall phone in my kitchen. A young woman at my workplace asked me in all innocence if I sell my house, will the new owners be forced to have a landline too? My grandfather refused to get a VCR, but not because he was a Luddite. VCRs were all made in Japan and he'd fought in the Pacific in World War II, so he refused to buy anything Japanese. Interesting side fact, this is why Nissan originally started selling cars as Datsun. They figured there was going to be a lot of bitter vets who remembered Nissan making war materials. Did Volkswagen ever have the same problem? They did for a bit. The brand got passed around a bunch before they started production. It was even going to be given to Ford for free, and they declined. It was offered to a bunch of different English companies. They all declined. So it was given back to Germany under supervision. It might have helped that they didn't actually make that many before all the factories started churning out war stuff. Seriously, the very first assembly plant opened in 38 and the war started in 39. Not a ton of time spent making bugs. They only made 210 before shutting down. Civilian bugs only started happening in the late 40s and only boomed in popularity in the mid-60s-ish. 20 years after the war ended, and during an entirely different war, so I imagine for some, it was easy to ignore the German aspect. Rural areas are always fun for this. In a grocery store, I overheard an older couple, back in 1989, discussing their high cholesterol levels. They didn't trust doctors and said downing a cup of really hot coffee every morning would clear the obstructions. No need for fancy medicine. I'm 65. Back in the early 1980s, I remember my grandmother asking my dad if they still made cars with the levers, throttle and spark advance, up by the steering wheel. The last car she had driven was a Model T Ford in about 1930. My grandma refused to get a TV in the early 1950s. My dad always wanted to watch shows, but he had to sneak to his friend's house because she didn't believe in getting a TV. My grandfather was a Mennonite, but had moved to a city and was working in factories as an adult. He even used to watch TV until John Wayne died, then he got rid of their set. He said it was evil to watch dead people moving around on a screen as if alive, like watching ghosts. He would tell us that TV was the devil's work. As a kid, I started drawing cartoon characters like animal characters and stuff. One day, he asked to see my drawings and he was outraged, saying I was drawing the product of bestiality, said it was evil. 
All that said, I loved him, and as I got older, he and I got really close. He was a God-fearing man, but he was also a very humble, peaceful, and funny guy. He taught me woodworking, gardening, and the joy of just sitting quietly in nature. He was just trying to save you from becoming a furry. My grandpa had to fight a hard campaign to get his dad and grandpa to switch from farming with horses to farming with tractors. His grandpa continued to maintain the horses for his own garden until his death in the 1960s. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.